In this screencast, we're going to make a big connection that ties subspaces or vector spaces to really just spanning sets. The idea, and this is something we've seen before, suppose we're in R3 and we have three vectors 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 3, negative 1. Well, these three vectors happen to lie in space. Question, what set do they span? Well, if I put them in a matrix and REF it, out pops 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, negative 1, 0. Well, this third column tells me that the third vector is twice the first, so two of these minus one of those, and that's precisely this vector. So what that means is, once I have these two vectors, the third vector is already in the plane spanned by those two vectors, which means that this third vector doesn't really add anything new. The column space is a vector subspace of R3. And you can think of the column space as the span of the three vectors 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 3, negative 1. But since this third vector depends on the first two, we could remove it from our spanning set and just go with 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 0. Because this third vector depended on the first two, by removing it, we shrink down the number of vectors needed to span the column space. This right here, this set of vectors, is called a basis for the column space. In either case, the column space is the span of a collection of vectors. The key fact that it's a span means that it's all linear combinations of these vectors, which in particular means if I times them all by zero, the zero vector is in the column space. I'm going to actually prove that it's a vector subspace. Two, if I take any two vectors in the column space, the sum of any two vectors in the column space, well, since it's in the span, any collection of vectors in that space still lies in the plane. So this is in the column space. In other words, the column space is closed under addition. In addition, three, if I take a scalar and times it by a vector in the column space, that's still in the column space, which means it's closed under scalar multiplication. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this idea and we're going to transport it to a new realm. Let's look at polynomials. And we're going to look at the set of polynomials of degree 2 or less. So this is all polynomials of the form a plus bx plus cx squared, where a, b, and c are real numbers. Well, I'd like you to look at this in a different way. Any polynomial is always something of this form. So you could think of it as a times 1 plus b times x plus c times x squared. Well, our vectors 1x and x squared If I consider their span, well, that is precisely this set. It's all linear combinations of the vectors 1, x, and x squared, the vectors being polynomials. So P2 of x is really the span of a collection of vectors. Since it's the span, 0 is in the span, the sum of 2 is in the span, and any constant multiple of a vector is in the span. The key is that the span of a set of vectors is precisely the same thing as a subspace. Every subspace is always the span of a collection of vectors. And so one way to show that you have a vector subspace is to show these three things, that 0 is in the column space, the sum of 2 is in the column space, and the constant multiple is in the column space. In other words, you have 0 and it's closed under addition and scalar multiplication. That's one way. Another option, just find a set that spans the space and that gives you a vector subspace. So this right here is going to turn into our basis for P2 of x, and we'll say P2 of x is a vector subspace of dimension 3. I'm going to switch gears, and we're going to change and go to a new space. We've already looked at, briefly, the set of matrices. So let's just take M22. It is all matrices of the form A, B, C, D, where A, B, C, and D are real numbers. 
It's fairly big space. You can pick any matrix you want, and the addition is done by matrix addition, and scalar multiplication is times by scalars. Well, you can take any matrix of the form A, B, C, D, and rewrite it as A times 1, 0, 0, 0, plus B times 0, 1, 0, 0, plus C times 0, 0, 1, 0, plus D times 0, 0, 0, 1. Well, hold on. That means that every matrix is a linear combination of these four. So the set of all 2 by 2 matrices is really the span of four matrices. 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 1. So M22 is a subspace. It's a vector space. It's spanned by those vectors. I'd like to show one last example by kind of finding a subspace of M22. Let's let V be the set of symmetric 2 by 2 matrices. So A, B, B, C. These two entries have to be the same. Well, you could write any of these matrices as A times 1, 0, 0, 0 plus b times, I need once in those two spots, 0, 1, 1, 0. Plus c times, take a guess, 0, 0, 0, 1. So these three vectors are spanning vectors, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Which means that the set of symmetric matrices is the span of three vectors. And since it's the span of three vectors, I automatically know zero is in the span. The sum of two symmetric matrices is a symmetric matrix. And a multiple of a symmetric matrix is a symmetric matrix. And so we immediately get out that this is a subspace by just saying, hey, look, it's the span of three vectors. The key we need is we need to learn how to take vector spaces and somehow break them up as the span of a much smaller collection. Here I have an infinitely large space. Here I have the span of just four things. Four things is a lot simpler to work with than infinitely many, and that's one of the goals of where we're headed, to get small collections of things to describe a whole huge space. That completes this.